Good morning. Uh, after many re requests uh, following version 1, we've now got version 2 of the advanced skills and training matrix. Um, so I'm going to go through uh, the features that are included in this, in this next version. Uh, there's also a link below to uh, iteration 1 of the advanced skills and training matrix. Uh, so I'm going to jump straight into it. I will give a quick recap. So what is a skills matrix? Essentially, a skills matrix is the ability to visualize skill capability of a team, ideally on one page. So interpreted within five seconds from five feet, um, which is the, the heat map and the number elements. So I'll go into those in detail in a moment. Um, so in this, in this template, what we have along the top here are your processes, tasks, skills, competencies, the things that you do in your team to deliver uh, the proposition of your business. Uh, along the left hand side what we have are your team member names uh, and optionally their job role. Once we add, start to add information we see that the matrix automatically updates. So if we start very quickly with team names, so let's call this the bank teller team. Uh, your name, so whatever your name is, so let's put my name for example. Now what we see here, when I exit that, we can see that the, the title automatically updates, so Bank Teller Team Skills Matrix Training Report by Alex Smith. If we then start to add individuals within the team, now I won't, I'll, I'll show you a, a true Blue Peter style version I've created before, but let's, let's just show you uh, how to add scores. So the scoring system is based on X being an individual is exempt from the skill. Uh, one, they're not yet capable, but they require to be capable. Uh, two, they're showing capability. They've started the training. Um, you can't yet leave them alone to do the task by themselves because they don't understand the quality and throughput requirement. Um, or they haven't yet been exposed to the task long enough to appreciate what the quality and throughput requirements are. Uh, level 3 is your sweet spot, so that's where an individual is capable. Uh, you can leave them to get on with the job. Uh, level 4 is where someone is an expert. Uh, they may even be able to train others. Now the, the, the key with that is, is a, a trap that a lot of team leaders fall into is that they themselves do all of the training or there is a coach or a trainer typically one or two people that do all of the training. Now that limits you then to the number of training sessions that can happen at once. But if you start to identify people that are expert or very capable uh, at various processes or skills, then you can conduct parallel training sessions and more rapidly upskill the team. So what, we're going to, what, what I'm going to show you here is how to allocate scores. So say for example, uh, the skill is uh, banking of a check. Uh, I'm currently level 3, capable, um, but the target that I'm being set is 4. I need to get to an expert level. And we can see that the skills uh, are automatically reflected within the analytics. So if I jump now to a, a completed version of the skills matrix, what we see is something akin to this. So we have a team here of uh, 20 processes and 20 team members. We can see that there are a variety of, of processes or competencies from cash handling, customer services, uh, processing transactions, all the way across to more of the management skills, so time management, training and development, team management, so the responsibilities for those. Uh, so we can see that our team manager, leader, coach at the top, they do have responsibilities for training and development. Now that's training and development responsibility, not necessarily doing the training, but the planning and the execution uh, and the organization. We can see there are a variety of fours dotted around, but we need to improve that. Um, overall, what we see is the current capability is in light blue, and dark blue is, is future state capability. So possibly for the first time when we present this to the team members, they have a clear roadmap of where they currently reside in terms of their current com uh, competency uh, and what our targets are and where we want to get them to. So 
this template aims to serve um, as, as a tool, a management tool, to help you identify all of the areas, so the reds, which is our heat map element, and ambers, that we need to improve. As we improve capability, what we see is we see a net improvement in capacity. Um, what I mean by that is if you have a team of 10 and your team capability is 50%, do you really only have a team size of 5? Um, as you improve capability, you make people more efficient, uh, you reduce quality control, you improve um, the throughput speed, you actually become a more proactive um, and higher performing team. But also, as you start to improve the knowledge of the individuals within the team, you can you can leave them um, to do the work without having to micromanage. So, um, autonomy is a is a is a factor that is highly motivates people. So this, yeah, I've gone through this very quickly. And if you want a better summary of this, go to the the link below for for version one, which is largely similar to this. Where we got feedback uh, and where we've developed version two is. In the early days of introducing a skills matrix, you may be less inclined to share the whole report to the team because it is sensitive. Uh, it does outline where people's current skills are. So how do we show, for example, uh, Ainsley? How would we show just Ainsley's um, view of capability? Well, on the left-hand side, we can see these arrows. These arrows then produce a report. Now, the report is specific to an individual. So in this example, Ainsley, um, he's a highly competent individual. So he's of the 20 processes or skills, he's competent in 15 of them. Uh, we've set targets that will get him fully capable or competent in all 20 of the, the processes defined. Therefore, his current capability gap is 5. Uh, now, we're not having to fill any of this information in. This is all automatically produced from that summary screen. So Ainsley's current capability score is 76.3. His target capability score will be 85.9%. Uh, He's got 12 days left in which to hit that target. But if we look down um, to the summary, what we can see is current capability, target capability. Where an individual has met their target, it will say, yes, you've met it. Where they haven't, if there is time remaining, it will still say, still time remaining. Or it will say overdue, so they haven't met, in that instance, uh, the aspiration that you, you set or the target that you set. But what we also have is we have this radar map. So uh, light blue is their current capability level. Dark blue is where we want them to develop capability. So printing this uh, and providing it to the individual and here you are able to put specific development notes and points and discussion points that you've made. Um, this can also support their PDP, uh, their personal development plan. What you can do with this, and the print parameters are all set within all of the reporting, is pr provide this uh, and agree it with the individual so that you start to own team development as a team. Team development shouldn't just be the responsibility of the team manager, it should be a shared responsibility. Um, now there will always be individuals within your team that are um, highly uh, or very very keen and motivated to, to develop their skills so the question from them is where do I need to develop well this answers those skills uh, you'll also have underperforming team members uh, or members that need encouragement and again this answers the question of well, where do I need to get you to by when um, and have you met those targets so there's an individual report for each uh, person. If you click the arrows, it will take you back to the to the skills summary, uh, which is your skills matrix. Um, what we've also introduced in this version, and I'll give you a quick overview of this of this page. So on this page, you obviously have your numbers, current capability, uh, target capability. Uh, now that's the only thing you're really completing in this in this document. Everything else is automated. What we have down the bottom here per process is a count of the number of capable staff. So in this example we've got 10 people that are level 3 or above. But we've set targets to get 14 people, um, of which 10 are already uh, capable, up to level 3 or above. So we have a skills gap 
of four. So that's your high level targets. You can then drill down into the individual summary reports um, and that's where it's powerful because that's your iterative skill improvement. You can't, there's no, well, it, in every scenario I've come across there's no magic wand where you can upskill everyone straight away. So it is an iterative step-by-step -step process. Uh, the same analytics exist at the team level, so if we have a look at Ainsley here, we can see that he is currently capable in 15 of the 20 processes or competencies. We want to get him to 20, so therefore his skills capability gap is 5. So this will all become very clear. The more you use it, repetition uh, certainly will build uh, familiarity with the report. The true acid test is, are you using the report weekly to improve skills capability? I would encourage you uh, long term to be at a point where you're printing this report or showing it on a TV um, and you're, you're having your weekly team huddles to say, you know, how are we going to improve skills capability this week? What is the priority? What are we going to commit to? Um, when we talk about our target days, we should be setting at least quarterly uh, targets. So if we get to the 1st of June, we should then be reviewing this and setting targets for the next quarter that we collectively aspire to achieve. Uh, one additional report that's included uh, in this matrix is the team summary radar. So this is a new report. So on this report, what we have, if I zoom in a little bit, and again, this is entirely um, automated with the exception of the executive summary. So the executive summary is something that you as the team manager will be presenting to your senior leadership team or to the business owner um, or to whatever whoever your reporting line is to, to evidence that you have full control of team uh, development and that you have a plan in place. So your executive, uh, executive summary for the reporting period, let's say it's quarterly, would outline your objectives and your priority for that quarter. You might also um, outline challenges, so if you're having challenges around recruitment or someone is on uh, leave or sickness um, or you have a sudden spike in new business, whatever the case may be that is your challenge to overcome, um, that's what you want to outline as, as your sort of introduction to this report. Then what the report shows is the current team capability, the target team, team capability and the gap. We then go down and we see that there's current capability versus target capability at an individual level. So not going into the depths of a skills matrix and a heat map, um, because at the senior leadership level they probably want less condensed information. Um, so you have your current and target capability, and then you have your um, visualization. So we can see that light blue is our current capability. You know, you will never get to 100% because skill is very fluid. There are always new processes being introduced. People leave, people come. So it, it, it is a moving um, target. But you need to be able to reflect to say, in the last quarter, was I successful in improving team capability? Unless you're measuring it, you won't know. Um, so this, this report, what this report does very, very simply is shows you your current capability, your aspirational capability, so where you will get to if and when those um, targets are realised, and the gap. So the gap is what you're working on. As we move down, what we can see is we can see the spread of skill um, within the team. So what we have here in the current scenario is we largely accept that 14.5% of the processes aren't um, required for everyone to be skilled at. So they'll be the management competencies largely where you're saying that we don't, we don't expect everyone in the team to aspire to be the manager. Um, level one is where we're saying we are setting um, expectations for individuals to become proficient. Level two, you know, we've got 25.5% of people in training actively. Um, uh, green, capable, purple, very capable. But what does the future state of the team look like? Okay, well, we still accept that 14.5% won't be expected to do certain things. But we're reducing the number of non-capable with the expectation, and we can see that that collective with the 20% the, the which is reduced from 25, we're starting to see the future state of the team, based on our plan, being more capable. Uh, we're also seeing a, 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 an improvement in the highly capable, which means that we're then able to more rapidly upskill the team and we start to fall into the continuous improvement piece. Um, so I'd highly recommend if you're a team manager, this is one of the tools that you need to have 
uh, in your in your toolbox. Um, it is a great way for you to simply um, and accurately understand what needs to be done, who has the skill to do it, where do we need to train. Um, the analytics then will help you to develop individuals. Individuals will then perceive you as a, as a more competent uh, manager, but also then to create the reporting capability that you send upward within the organization um, for you to be able to evidence to the senior leadership team that perhaps you're ready then to take on further responsibilities within the organization. Um, so you can download this. Uh, all the download links are, are below. Um, I hope you find this useful. We're very... Um, feedback focused so if you have an idea or you need something developed or you want to have a chat around you know what's the net impact of capacity when we improve capability whatever it may be uh, we're, we're genuinely passionate about improving um, the, the, the skills capability because that's the true acid test have we improved the capability of the team but also to help managers improve their uh, capability and understanding of, of how to in, improve uh, skills capability so great stuff drop us a line if if um, you want anything um, or drop a note in YouTube and we'll, we'll respond to that thanks very much bye